Hello everyone and welcome back to our online multiplayer tutorial series. In our last episode we started work on how to replicate shooting mechanics in your games. So we managed to get it so we can replicate the animation side of the shooting. Um, what we're going to be doing today is getting it so we replicate the actual firing of bullets and dealing of damage. So let's get started with this. So we're going to go open up our third person character and we're going to create a new event and new function to handle this. So we're going to go create a new function and we're going to do this one called fire bullet. And this function here is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a line trace out and then determine what we hit, deal damage to it. So let's do a line trace via channel. And this thing is going to be from the muzzle of the gun here. And I mean muzzle quite literally because on the skeleton here, I've got a socket that came part of this model. If you haven't got a socket, you can always just add one by right clicking add socket. And you want to position that into the uh, end here. Making sure that its X coordinate is going out of the gun. Anywho, that's that. So we're going to use that muzzle to start our line trace. So we can get the gun mesh out, get socket location, and we're going to type in the name of that socket exactly as it appears. And that's going to be our starting point. Okay. Uh, now this game here, I'm not going to add in any fancy aiming controls. It's going to be literally just walk around and in the cut in the various directions here and shoot based on which way the actor's going, not but aiming here but aiming up and down all that stuff shouldn't be too difficult if you have added that already um i've got videos about how to add all that but we're not going to waste time in this series going through some some stuff we've been for uh, been gone through before so we've got the socket location and we're going to now get the end location the end location to come from the actor's forward vector so get actor forward vector and we will multiply it by the range so multiply by float and let's type in a thousand here. We're now going to add these two together because we're offsetting this length to this location. Now we want to change the trace channel here from visibility to camera. Now the reason why, because if we click on our mesh of our main character here that we're shooting against, we scroll down to their collision properties, you can see visibility set to ignore. We want to change that to be block. So instead of just changing it over here, we can change it to be using the camera trace channel. So that's what I've done here. So with that in mind, we can now break out our, out here by doing break. And we're going to use this to calculate all the damage we're going to do. So first things first, we only want to carry on if we've actually hit something. So this return value, we're going to put into a branch. So that just basically says don't do anything unless we hit something. Then we're going to check whether or not the thing we've hit can actually receive damage. So get hit actor from our break here and we'll do can be damaged. Now we'll get that and we're going to put that into a branch as well. Okay, now with that done, we can now do the apply damage. So from the true, drag out and do apply point damage. Now what apply point damage does, it not just deals damage, but you can add in a load of different information here regarding the hit that actually took place. So the hit, hit info here, it's going to come from our out hit, drag that over like so. The base damage here, we do a random range for now. So a random floating range. And we'll do between 10 and 20. And then finally we've got our hit from direction. So hit from direction is going to come from the uh, location and the trace start. So hit from direction, drag that out and do direction and you also get unit direction. And this takes two vectors and calculates the direction from those. So we've got a from part of this is going to be the actual hit location of the impact. So we're going to go to impact point and drag that to from. The two is going to be the trace start. And that will trace out a line from the hit direction to that. Now, why is that useful? Well, on the, on the player, what we could do is add some HUD element to tell them where they got damaged from, which makes it a lot easier for them to fight back. 
Uh, damage causer, we're going to put in a self-reference. And the damage actor is going to come from our hit actor here. Like so. It's a bit of a model here. Um, but we can minimize it down a little bit like so. Make it a bit more readable. Okay, so there is our applied point damage. Next, we're going to do is a print string on this so we can see what damage is being done. So we're going to do print string and just drag that over to here. So one little thing you may have noticed on some of your nodes that you've been, you've no, may have noticed when making other games is this little node icon here. And what this means is that this function will only run on a server. So clients do not actually do the applying of damage. It's the server that does it. Again, we go back to the mantra that server is king and God and controls everything. And in this case, it controls how much damage is being applied, which is very, very useful because when we do randomized damage, it means it's only getting one location of the damage. So the clients aren't going to give you conflicting damage reports. It's all going to come from the server. So let's hit compile. So keep bear in mind that this will only execute on the server. So that means we need to make a remote procedural call or RPC, which we covered last episode, uh, to handle the firing of bullets. So let's create a custom R event. Do RPC underscore fire bullet. And then from there, we're going to drag our fire bullet function out. So click on the event, go to where it says replicates on the right hand side and change that to run on server. So the server is running all our damage dealing code, which is correct. So now we need to call this event and we're going to go to where we shoot the gun from input action here and simply just add it on here. So RPC, fire bullet. And we'll copy and paste that for this one. And you don't need to do it for the multicast ones here. Okay, the multicast is just handling the animation. This is handling all the firing bullets. The reason why you don't need to do a replication of that is because the applied damage is doing all the, all the work. The server is doing all the work. So let's go and see how this looks in game. Actually, let's first of all turn on debug so I can see our line here. So I'm going to do for duration on that. Close and push play. Okay, so let's drag these across. So I've got my clients on the left, serve on the right. So client here, you can see I can shoot. And I don't see the debug in that window. I see it only in the uh, server window. That's because the server is running that code. The line should be longer than that. Did I type in 100 instead of 1,000? I did. It should be 1,000. Right that again. Okay, so clients on the left. Brilliant. So now that will shoot, and you can see the damage now being reported back across the whole lot. And you see it's only the server that's recruit uh, is reporting it. The client is doing the shooting, but the server is doing all the maths. And that's what you want. Okay, you want the server to be in control of the situation. That way the players know that everyone is on the same playing field. So I go to the server here. You can see the debugs happening on the server because the server's doing the line tracing. It's doing the line tracing, it's doing the maths, it's doing all of it. And that means the numbers are all the same. So let's show you that impact point working. So I'm a third person character on the event graph. We're going to do a uh, damaged event. So event point damage. And we're going to do a simple line trace here. Our channel. Uh, start point is going to be the hit location. And the shot from direction is going to be here multiplied by length and let's change that to 100 i should do it by 300 by 300 i'm going to add that onto the hit location here so we're just doing this to debug the hit direction is working correctly so to do that i'm going to drag this down and change the color of here to uh, like a blue and that way it should stand out so if i hit compile also take note, the event here has the server icon as well, meaning that only the server handles this, this event. So if you want the client to do anything specific with the information when it gets hit here, you can't do it directly on here. You have to do another call out to a different function. So let's close that and push play. And we should now see 
the line trace of the impact coming out as a blue line. Oh, I didn't put debug on. Let's put debug on. Debug, we'll do it persistent as well so it sticks around. Blink. Okay, and let's just drag these up. Okay, so my server, we're going to shoot, and it's now drawn a blue line. Now, wait for the other one to disappear, and you'll see it clearly pointing to the exact direction that you shot from. And that's it. And that'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll show how to translate this data onto a user interface element. So we're going to have different HUD elements on the screen, showing the health of all the players, and show it going down, going up, and so forth. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where you can watch that part, plus many others. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any suggestions or any questions you have about future content, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.